This is part two of the Switching to OpenSUSE 10 day challenge. So in part two, I wanted to go over packages in OpenSUSE, uh, ButterFS, what that entails, what it looks like, and some of the downsides and upsides to it. And then also go over some of the aspects of KDE's uh, just stock implementation in OpenSUSE. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with some of the package management in OpenSUSE. Uh, the very first thing I wanted to get out is Zipper, which is the terminal instruction. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal, slide it in here, and we're going to take a look at Zipper. So uh, I'm just going to do Zipper help dash dash help. This kind of shows you all the commands and just as a good uh, terminal hotkey, whenever you're in terminal and you're unsure of the command to use, dash dash help usually goes ahead and gives you this quick set of things to do. So probably the most notable things in here is one, you're usually running zipper as sudo, you know, so you're doing it as root or super user. And then you're going to be usually adding or installing a service. So you see you can do the full install or just type in. So you could do zipper in OBS, for instance. Uh, or if you need to remove a package, zipper, rm, or remove, and then the package name. And it's really that simple, and it's really awesome in that regard. Also, updates is, you know, space up. And also, there's a lot of autocompletes in OpenSUSE's terminal. So I'm really, really happy overall with Zipper as a package manager, uh, especially, I, I would even say it has a leg up on almost all of them as far as Aptitude and the other ones. The only thing I don't like is the default repositories. It's very, very limited. So when you try to go and install these off the get-go, it's not very good. So uh, before you get in and start trying to install packages using Zipper, um, I wanted to talk about a couple things. So the first thing is adding repositories. Now, you can add them by command line if you know the exact ones you to do, but uh, I don't recommend doing that. I like recommending... Uh, adding the repo, the Pac-Man repository. So if you're an Arch user coming to OpenSUSE, it's almost a necessity to add Pac-Man. And honestly, I would add Pac-Man no matter where you're coming from, just because there's so many packages in there that you need, such as Kodaks and other things. So uh, let's go ahead and go to Yast. And from there, we're gonna uh, type in the software repositories. And this will modify zipper and add whatever we need. So I have two custom ones I've added is Google Chrome and Pac-Man. I went ahead and up the priority a little bit just so I wanted to grab everything from Pac-Man if it's not there, default back into the normal ones. I've also done some other things such as a Vulkan repository and uh, the rest are pretty much standalone. So nothing, nothing too crazy there. Um, to add a repository though, you'd get into your configured software repositories, click add, and then community repositories. If there's a specific one like Google Chrome or something like that, you can click specific. But if you're just starting out, I highly recommend just doing community repositories and hitting next. It goes ahead and queries all of the ones that are in here. And let's say you need NVIDIA graphics drivers. It'll do that and then you can install the proprietary ones from command line. Um, since I've already installed Pac-Man, it's not in here, but by default, it is a community repository and you want to make sure you check that and hit okay to add it to your repository. So it's, it's literally that simple. So it's all almost command line at that point. Um, you know, you don't really need to get into terminal if you don't want to, if you're far more comfortable working in GUI, the special thing about OpenSUSE is you don't really have to drop the terminal for much. Uh, I just find it's a little easier for me, uh, but personal preference will vary there. So with that said, let's take a look at adding and installing software in here. Uh, we can easily do that um, from the software management right next to software repositories. And then from here, we can easily just type in whatever package we need. So I want Caden live because that's the video editor of choice for me. 
and it would pull it up and there we go. And you can actually kind of look through and see some more technical information. Say, hey, where's this coming from? What's the licensing on it? Um, and you can see what distribution and all these other things and also the actual source version. So it's a lot uh, better than a lot of things. And then also checking like dependencies and things like that. It's actually a pretty good resolver of dependencies as well doing it this way. So very, very powerful. And you can select through uh, different versions if it's options on different repositories. So uh, if you had a Caden Live repository in here, it would probably show like a newer version or maybe even a staging or beta version. And uh, this is just kind of a really awesome heads up. I really, really dig the software management in OpenSUSE just because of the power it gives you. Now, in a past uh, episode on the part one, if you hadn't checked it out, check it out. But on part one, I kind of knocked Discover. Well, that actually wasn't part of OpenSUSE. That's part of KDE Plasma. And it sucks. Don't use it. <laughs> So I actually went in and uninstalled Discover and KDE Plasma works just fine without Discover Client because I did not want my default packages opening up in Discover. I want it handled by Yast or directly from Zipper and I didn't want Discover taking any anything I click online and trying to install it. So uh, that's why I removed Discover just to completely take it out of the equation. And many people out there had the exact same thing to say about the KDE's Discover store. I think there was one positive uh, message and there's about 10 other people that said, hey, it's horrible, I don't like it, it's buggy. So why use it? Just use Yast. If you're in OpenSUSE, there's no reason not to just use the software management here as there's nothing gained from the Discover store except for maybe flat packs or something like that. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I still wouldn't do it. I just, I don't like it. So let's say you have your new repositories in Yast. You have the Pac-Man repository. You tried to install it and it's not found or you can't get it through Zipper. So what is your next options? Well, you can actually download and install RPM packages. Now, if you're coming from a Debian based system, it's good to know .debs don't work natively on here that uses RPMs much like Fedora, CentOS, or RHEL uh, boxes. So uh, if you need a repository to download these, I highly recommend uh, just kind of uh, this one right here is a, a pretty good one. So you come into opensusa.packages.org and you can basically just type in whatever it is you're looking for and just say, hey, uh, I only need tumbleweed OpenSUSE. So you can do that and then let's go Kate live. So th th this kind of pulls up just a, a full on, hey, these are all the packages we have and it says, hey, are you on KDE? Are you on other ones? So we want this and we could say, you know what, we have 18.08, but I really saw this new feature in .12. I want to go ahead and go with it, but I don't want to do anything crazy. I could actually go on here and say I'm on an X 64-bit uh, system. Come down here and download this full package. So let's go ahead. I believe they put the download kind of down towards the bottom here. Yeah, right here. You want the binary package. We'll click on that. And as you see, it pulls in here. So go ahead and keep it and click on it to open it. As you see, I uninstalled Discover, so it's trying to open it right now in YAS, Software Management System. So what this does, YAS ingests it and says, hey, there's a conflict resolution. It says there's an old version on here, 18.08. Um, and if we expand this a little bit more, we're gonna have to override that if we want. So we can say, hey, break this one, do not install or deinstall. So for this one, we'd want to deinstall 18.08 to go ahead and push this 18.12. And this would go ahead and upgrade us to the latest and greatest and uh, all would be right with the world. So it's kind of cool if you want to like a one-off type system. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this out because I don't want to do that. I don't mind uh, running a little more stable package here and just staying with what the repos give me for Caden Life. But the really cool thing here is if there's a certain Kodak or uh, package that you need, good chances it's going to be in the pkgs.org uh, here repository and you can download and install it directly. Now let's say that isn't the case and you needed to 
install a, a DEB package because it only comes in Debian. Well, there's also something called Alien. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. And Alien actually converts DEB to RPM packages. So you could take a, a Debian package, put it to RPM, and install it. So a pretty cool thing in something I would convert if you, it's an absolutely last ditch thing. I wouldn't recommend going ahead and jumping to this, but it's worth a shot. If, if you want to go ahead and do that, convert it to an RPM and then install it through YAS software management. But let's say that fails and there's no Debian script or an RPM package. Well, it's still okay. You can actually uh, do a, a user actually put this out there and there's something called Bedrock Linux. So let me go ahead and pull it up. And this is uh, basically adds the Arch user repository, which is a, basically a build script for many other softwares out there. So let's say there's no packages available at all for something. This will actually pull in the AUR script and build it in OpenSUSE. So this is pretty cool. And this can be used in other packages as well. So this is a very, very in-depth uh, thing. So when it comes to OpenSUSE, you got to realize a lot of the packages are a little dated, I find. I'm coming from Arch, so there is that. Arch is always bleeding edge. But it's also good to know if you're coming from Debian, Debian has a little bit broader packages, more packages available. So this is just alternative ways to use OpenSUSE and get every package you want. Because I think a lot of people distro hop uh, just because they can't get their package or this one certain thing working. When Linux is Linux, guys, you should never switch a distribution just because, well, it works in this one, it doesn't work in this one. Well, it just means you probably need to do something as far as switching the package over or just doing a direct build for that specific version of Linux. There's nothing I found that is specifically meant for only one version of Linux, unless it was specifically built for that one thing. I, don't, I can't really think of anything offhand um, that just only works on there. I mean, even some of the ones that are like, hey, you have to use CentOS, uh, the one that pops in my head is DaVinci Resolve. But even then, uh, there's scripts that take that from an RPM package to a Debian and you can install it on, on those. So I'm getting a little lost in the weeds here. So that's packages uh, generally for OpenSUSE and how you would go about installing pretty much anything you'd want in an OpenSUSE environment. So the other two things I wanted to talk about is ButterFS and uh, KDE. KDE I have literally had no problems with other than the Discover package. Once I figured it was tied to KDE, I looked into removing it and you could remove it without any consequence to it. It did have some uh, dependencies I was worried about, um, but after removal, I haven't had to deal with it at all. So that's gonna be the last I mentioned Discover in this series. Now, ButterFS, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop up this comment real fast. When it was first released, it did have a lot of bugs. There was issues with the file system. Uh, the file system itself is now pretty stable and very good from everything I see. However, it does have compatibility issues. I briefly touched on that in part one with my Dropbox not working. Some people have reported some games only like the EXT4 format. I haven't run into that just yet. All the Steam games I've been playing on uh, my OpenSUSE machine hasn't had any issues with it being a, a ButterFS partition. So, and honestly, if you did have a problem with it, it's not that big a deal. Most people run a home partition in ext4 and install their games and stuff into that, either on a second drive or just on a separate partition. Because if you're wiping out your Linux installation every 10 days, like me, <laughs> you want your home on a different partition. So my home partition is the XT4. And if I do run into a problem with a certain game being on a uh, ButterFS system, no problem. Same with my Dropbox. Uh, it seems like that mostly is cleared up now that I've thrown everything on my XT4. Uh, but overall, um, the ButterFS, do I recommend it? Is probably the better question here. No, I don't. I still think EXT4 is a lot better. I don't like the default partitioning. Um, I know uh, in the comments I read, uh, a lot of OpenSUSE advocates don't like its auto partitioning either. I have about four hard drives in this system right now. And during the default installation, it made changes to 11 partitions, changes or created 
uh, that many partitions on four drives. So uh, definitely something to consider. It did modify my Windows. I have a complete separate Windows drive. It did modify it and touched it in the auto partitioning scheme. Um, it didn't look like it did any damage though. I did try and boot back into Windows. I try not to <laughs> boot into it as often as I can, you know, as far as staving off and not uh, touching it because every time I do it seems like it wants to do an update because it has been almost a full month since I had to boot into Windows which is amazing I think the last time I booted in was specifically to play a VR game or uh, I, I think I needed something from one of my Adobe I think it was Adobe After Effects when I redid my intro uh, was actually the last time I was in there but uh, anyways ButterFS it's good. It's probably going to be the de facto file system sometime in the future. Uh, but a lot of applications don't particularly like it right now, such as Dropbox and um, some Steam games, apparently. Um, but I can't confirm that one. Um, so you might stick with the EXT format just for today. So that was my, you know, part two of switching to OpenSUSE, mainly sticking to package managers here because the weakness in OpenSUSE is one, it's super easy to install, it's super easy to configure and get around and do all your stuff, but the thing it lacks is package management as far as out of the box package management. A lot of people have reported, hey, I can't get my codecs. I can't get this package to run on it because I need a .dev package or, you know, there's a variety of different things, but almost all of them are revolving around packages. So I really wanted to make an in-depth uh, fix for those guys that are on OpenSUSE on how to get their programs installed because that is the biggest thing is you want your workflows to work and if you can't get one of your your pieces of software or let's say a driver or a package uh, for a specific purpose to work in OpenSUSE then you're like okay the distro sucks I'm moving on and that's one thing I'm going to try and hammer home in each one of these 10 day series that I do it doesn't matter what distribution you use you should be able to use almost every single piece of software that you want as long as it's Linux compatible. People don't make software specifically for Ubuntu. At least if they do, it's, it's a very, very, very small percentage. If it's a big, big software, it's going to work on almost any distro. It's just some have a lot better out-of-the-box capabilities than others. So that's why I wanted to walk through all these different steps that you can take to get everything installed that you want installed on any distribution. Because yes, this is targeted for OpenSUSE, but it applies to so many distributions out there. Many people go to a distribution and go, hey, my package isn't there, therefore this distribution sucks. I'm going back to Ubuntu or I'm going back to Arch. Um, and that is just wrong because you can get almost any of these working. And I want to just illustrate that point today. Um, but I've gone on too long ago. This has turned more into a rant than uh, a part two update. So uh, that's it for today's video, guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to part three and probably finish with a part four uh, for OpenSUSE's 10 day challenge. I've really enjoyed and I still am loving OpenSUSE. Uh, so that's it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.